They are the most vulnerable and desperate of patients. And a Channel 4 I team investigation is about to reveal what happened to them inside the walls of a state mental institution. Some of it is so disturbing, families are asking, how could this happen to the mentally ill? Our chief investigative reporter, Jeremy Finley, is here now with the results of a four-month investigation. Well, this number may sum it up. Our investigation found in the past three years, 65 disciplinary actions have been taken. Employees either fired, suspended, or disciplined for abuse, neglect, or mistreatment of patients or failing to manage patients at risk. What we've uncovered are cases of patients being mistreated, touched sexually, and one patient left alone long enough to take his own life. This is how the family of Cody Skelton likes to remember him. A talented bass player hamming it up on a public access channel. But Cody also had a different side. And last November, the mental illness that Cody had struggled with his entire life took over once again. Well, he was in an uncontrollable state. He was just losing it. Threatening to harm himself, Cody was first taken to the nearest hospital on November 27th, according to his family. They don't know why, but Cody was then sent to the Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institute. Like so many of the patients here, Cody didn't have insurance, and the institution was the last resort for him to get help. And I thought, fantastic, thank goodness. The people, you know, thank goodness that he's there at the hospital. People, there'll be people there, professionals, they'll be able to look after him and take care of him. On the morning of November 29th, Cody drowned himself inside the state institution. I just want to know what happened. It's a question that can be asked not only about Cody's death. How is it other mentally ill patients can be left alone for almost an hour? How could another patient be touched sexually by a nurse? Or how a patient who suffered from sexual abuse could be doused with a trash can of water by another nurse? The Channel 4 I team found all that and more happening to mentally ill patients in a facility run by the state. It's all something the CEO of the institute doesn't want to talk about. Why won't you talk to me about what happened to the patients here? If they can't take care of him, they can't take care of the others. It scares you. Cody's autopsy, which we obtained through public records requests, explains his terrible death. Cause of death, drowning manner of death, suicide. The autopsy shows Cody secured his head inside an overflowing toilet and drowned himself. A bed sheet secured the bathroom door shut. Those terrible details are important to know, Cody's family says, because it shows Cody was unmonitored long enough to plan and pull off an elaborate death. Sometimes I feel angry, sometimes I feel confused, but mostly I just want to know what happened. The institution will not release to Cody's family or to the Channel 4 I team their internal investigation into his death or explain how often Cody was monitored. But their own internal policies for handling management of patients at risk states when a patient is placed on suicide precautions, the patient shall be monitored constantly and the bathroom should be locked at all times. Again, the institution won't say if they deemed Cody suicidal. But remember, just two days earlier, he threatened to harm himself. Cody needed help. And internal disciplinary records obtained by the Channel 4 I team raise serious questions of how other patients were treated. One report states a nurse straddled a male patient and took his hands and rubbed them on her chest, thighs, and back. The nurse denied doing it but admitted she kissed him and was suspended. Yet just four months later, that same nurse was fired for failing to check on two patients for nearly an hour, patients who were supposed to be under intense observation. Then there's this nurse, suspended for pulling on a female patient's arms to get her out of bed, and then dumping a trash can of water on the patient's head. The report reads the nurse's actions had the potential to re-traumatize the patient with a history of physical and sexual abuse. And then there's this report of another nurse suspended when she and her patient were found having their hands around the other's shoulders and neck area. At the end of the encounter, the patient was observed to be lying on the floor. Miss Gilligan? 
after the CEO of the state institution, Candace Gilligan, refused our repeated requests for an on-camera interview, we went to the institute to get answers. I wanted to speak to you about the cases of the patients here. Ma'am, please let me talk to you about what happened. Talk to you, sorry. Why won't you talk to me about what happened to the patients here? A spokesman for the State Department of Mental Health, which oversees the institution, said in an email, quote, the security of patients and staff are a great concern and patient abuse is something we take very seriously. As for Cody's family, they've now hired an attorney hoping to force the state to produce answers. The family has a lot of questions uh, about the care he received. And try to come to terms with the violent end to their loved one's life. I miss him. I want my brother back. I want my brother back. Well, the head of the mental health agency was just summoned to the office of a senior lawmaker who sits on a state committee that oversees the institution. And tonight, an insider reveals even more about conditions for patients and employees at that state institution. I'm Jeremy Finley with Channel 4. Wanted to see if I could talk to you. I know that you just had a meeting with the senator about this. I really don't have a comment to make. Mental Health Commissioner Doug Varney wasn't expecting to see the Channel 4 I-Team outside his meeting with Senator Doug Henry last Thursday. The Channel 4 I-Team shared our findings with Senator Henry about what we uncovered happening inside that state institution. Findings that include a nurse sexually touching a patient and another nurse pulling on a patient and dumping a trash can of water on that patient's head. We also found incidents that raise questions of how often nurses were checking on seriously mentally ill patients, including a nurse discipline for not checking on two patients for nearly an hour, patients who needed intense observations, and the death of patient Cody Skelton, who was left alone long enough to drown himself within the institution. Well, I think it's very distressing. You wouldn't want any of your family, I wouldn't want any of my family in the institution where this kind of thing can happen to them. I really don't have a comment to make that. Well, I, I think it's important the state obviously uh, is the agency that oversees this hospital. Are you concerned about what happened to these patients? I'm always concerned about what happens to our patients. And what about in these specific cases? These specific cases we've been, been dealt with, they've been addressed. Our staff do a great job at the hospital. These were isolated incidents they were dealt with. Thank you. But numbers just released by the state to the Channel 4 I team raise questions about just how isolated those incidents were. In three years, 65 disciplinary actions have been handed down for employees who were either fired, suspended, or disciplined for things like abuse, neglect, or mistreatment of patients, or failing to manage patients at risk. We've asked the state for explanations on all those incidents. In the meantime, the Channel 4 I team has just obtained another disciplinary report, this time for a charge nurse last September who lost track of a patient. That's right, lost track of a mentally ill patient inside the institution. The disciplinary letter says the patient was not brought back from what's called the treatment mall, where patients get therapy and have group sessions. The patient was left alone for hours, unwatched, unaccounted for, inside the treatment mall. He was finally found at 7.25 p.m. The disciplinary report says the incident is very serious and demonstrates a weakness in staff accounting for our patients' locations at all times. It's getting crazy. It's getting out of hand. They don't have enough staff. This former employee who asked us to conceal her identity because she still works in the mental health field says she left the hospital because of a lack of staff. Staffing is just an issue, and that they brought that up, and what they're being told is, you know, budget, state budget cuts. They don't, they, you have to work with what you got. And state records show there have been cuts. 53 positions eliminated at the institution, including security guards, a security chief, two nurses, and perhaps the most telling, 14 psychiatric technicians who keep patients from injuring themselves or others. A spokesman for the Department of Mental Health stated in an email, quote, we have reviewed staffing patterns and they are consistent with industry standards established by the Joint Commission. We consistently met or exceeded these standards in our hospitals. And as for what should happen to employees who mistreat patients? What was your message to the commissioner about this? My message was, I'd like to see them all gone as soon as you can get rid of them. And he, he agreed. 
We've also learned staff are getting injured as well. 120 staff members injured in the past three years. Well, the photographs you're about to see were taken by a former employee of the Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institute from inside the facility. We've been investigating cases of patient neglect there, including the recent death of a patient. And now former employees are coming forward to say there's a reason some patients haven't been checked on because the people assigned to watch them were asleep. Oh, wow, that's terrible. Oh, wow. I'm not sure I want to see this. Steve Burke is among the taxpayers in Davidson County who we showed these pictures to and their reactions were all the same. You got to be kidding me. Photographs of employees paid by the state, not just nodding off, but sleeping. I mean, really sleeping. And this one right here looked like he is, is really enjoying his nap at work. That's terrible. And they're sleeping inside the Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institution, assigned to watch over, care for, and guard some of the most vulnerable patients in the state's care. Employees like this registered nurse out cold, right at a nurse's station. There's no question where this psychiatric tech is taking a snooze while on the job. What better place than again, right there at the nurse's station? I mean, I wish I could get paid to sleep too. And they go on and on. Another psychiatric tech asleep. Another psychiatric tech asleep. It's lazy. I mean, that, that, that's all I can say. And while these three are not responsible for anyone's lives, you still paid their salaries. Here are three photographs of housekeepers sleeping in all different parts of the institute. But this guy was responsible for lives because he was a security guard. Here he is sleeping inside, and his personnel file shows he was also busted for sleeping outside in a security vehicle while on duty in 2007, and that's when he admitted he had a sleeping disorder. Anything could be happening, and they sleep on their job. And there's more. Disciplinary actions obtained through a public records request by the Channel 4i team show that the state is well aware of the problem. Employee after employee after employee, all cited for sleeping on the job. And none of these people disciplined are the ones captured in these photographs. Additional employees assigned to watch over patients who needed intensive observation or constant observation. Discipline for falling asleep. Do you worry about the safety of the patients there right now? Yes. Michael Rhodes and Tyler Nelson are two recent employees of the Institute who agreed, independent of each other, to speak to the Channel 4i team about what they say these photographs captured. It's just a, a culture of irresponsibility and negligence. Every night I'm down, I was on that unit, I could hear him down there snoring, you know, like I can hear him snoring loudly from way up at the desk. And both say there's such a problem with employees sleeping that some have found a place to hide out of range of the cameras that monitor the hallways. Rhodes even drew for us what a hallway looks like and the small alcoves where he says employees hide in order to sleep and not get caught by the cameras. So they get in there and lean up against the patient's door in a chair and, and the cameras, they're out of view of the camera. There are some employees that will find a good hiding spot. They'll go into the employee break room and sleep. Why won't you talk to me about what happened to the patients here? After our first attempts to interview both the CEO of the institution and the commissioner of the State Department of Mental Health, we again asked for an interview and were again denied. But a state spokesman did confirm these photographs are of either former or current state employees or contract employees paid by the state and that in this woman's case, quote, MTMHI will take appropriate action to follow up to remind techs that they must be alert while on duty. The spokesman said employees are permitted to, quote, rest during breaks in the break room, but, quote, it cannot be determined from the pictures whether or not the employees are sleeping or if they are on duty. These employees say what's the most concerning is that the majority of the sleeping happens during the overnight hours, the same time period as we uncovered in our first investigation when patient Cody Skelton was left alone long enough to take his own life. A lot of things that, are, that, are, that shouldn't be going on are going on.
We attempted to reach out to all of the workers you just saw in those photographs. Two of them are current employees of the Institute and they denied our request for an interview. The others either did not want to talk or no longer had listed phone numbers.